By default in Microsoft 365, users can register or join any device into your Entra inventory, and attackers actually leverage this capability to maintain persistence after initial user compromise. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my top policies that you can institute to help protect against this part of the kill chain and prevent your asset inventory from getting cluttered with unapproved devices. Okay guys, so diving in here, if you've been following along with my videos the past few weeks, you know I've been covering some of the BYOD, personal device access policies I recommend, and then shifted into getting into our managed policies here as well today. So today we're gonna to cover this required tap for device registration, which is a really powerful policy. I really love this a lot for multiple angles that we'll see here in a few minutes, but I'll link the videos prior to this one. You guys can get caught up if you haven't seen those already. So today, again, we're looking at the device joins and registrations and how we can restrict that and, and lock that down. So when we think about the methods today of which this is kind of going on, right? We have our organic processes here where I talk about the out-of-box experience that we're looking at for new employee onboarding or maybe it's a new workstation. New workstation might be because they broke their last one or they lost it. Could also be that it's three or five years old and we're replacing it. So they're not going through kind of this experience of adding a device ad hoc on this side, which is more to say, maybe we've moved into a cloud-based approach and we're joining devices now, or they have a new approved device that we're going to be joining into our Entra environment. And those are kind of more of the approved ways versus what we have by default within Microsoft, which is going to be um, the registration that any user can really do with any device. If you got your auto enrollment turned on within Intune, it actually will prompt the user to go ahead and enroll whenever they sign in to any of the uh, client applications like Teams or Outlook on their desktop if they're using that device. And in our Entra inventory under the join type, this quickly starts to get cluttered with these registered devices that we don't necessarily manage whatsoever, but could be BYOD or personal devices. So I really like to restrict this, not only again to make sure that we don't have an unimproved asset inventory and clutter, but we also have some prevention for this type of attack where the attacker has compromised the user, maybe through token theft in this example, and they're joining a device, which is their device, onto our network to kind of hide and maintain persistence while they look to either move laterally, exploit other users, whatever that might look like. So when we talk about our protections here, we have our layer one protections and our layer two. I talked about this last week, but effectively here, it's kind of stepping you up in different areas because layer two protections either require a different maturity level or they require more processes that you would have to institute that may create some friction for you just kind of adopting kind of the L1 approach here. So when we talk about our, our layer one protections here, we really want to create a uh, conditional access policy here first to require an additional MFA prompt for the user to go ahead and register and join their device. This is going to directly prevent this type of attack. If we talk about a man in the middle attack, where a token has been captured and they're trying to register another device, this would actually prevent them from doing so because they're gonna be reprompted with MFA and it's not gonna be in the context of that fake website for talking about a man in the middle attack. So within Entra, if we go down to conditional access, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new policy. This is a policy that I add in every client environment as part of a 100 bucket. 100 meaning it's in every client by default as part of some baseline protections. And we're going to say require MFA to register device. You would go ahead and apply this to all users. I would go ahead, I would say this is a lesser concern to add a break glass account. Microsoft's going to warn you with that as far as best practice goes. Under the targeted actions here, targeted resources, we're going to click on user actions and we're going to click on register or join devices. So in this particular case, it's telling us that only require multi-factor authentication can be used, which is exactly what we want here. So you would go in and say require 
multi-factor authentication, you would turn this on and go ahead and click create. Guys, if you're enjoying these videos on the policy recommendations, check out my tool, clawcapsule.io, that you can run a free security assessment against your tenant here. It's very easy to sign up. You can sign up for free and just type in a tenant ID or domain and click on start assessment. I'll actually run the security performance assessment in your tenant. And you can go into actually the framework section here and within here, this is a list of pass fail values against the CIS controls for all the policies that we've been covering lately, including the one that I just showed you here for the external access and MFA being required to enroll devices into Azure AD and looking at the remediation steps that you can take here as well. So be sure to check this out and take a look at running an assessment today at cloudcapsule.io. Link will be in the description for you. The other configuration we're going to change here is within the Entra settings here to restrict the device joins by a group. And effectively what this is doing is saying like I only have approved users that are going to be joining devices, not necessarily everyone in the company at all times. And so this is helping out with this particular constraint where we have users who can register devices or join devices ad hoc at any time. Within the Entra portal, you'll go under the devices section under device settings. And this is the setting that we're gonna be looking at here, which is users may join devices to Microsoft Entra. In this particular case, you would go ahead and select a group for this. I've got my one user in here because this is just the test tenant, but you would wanna add a group to this. And effectively, if we think about our workflows, uh, particularly a new workstation on board or a new user on board, we would be temporarily adding that user while they're going through the out-of-box experience as part of their onboarding to that group as part of our SOP so that they can join their device into our network at that point in time because that's an approved workflow and we would remove them subsequently after that so that they would have to reach out to us in order to join necessarily another device. So if we tear back to our policy that we derived last week, which was requiring an Entra or hybrid join device to access corporate resources, they would have to be leveraging that in order to get access into their resources and then we're targeting them here so that they only have this approved window to actually join devices. Now, the one thing that you might be saying is, well, what, what about if they just register their device? You know, what if they, they can still do that versus joining it? And that is going to show up in the asset inventory. So to solve for that, we kind of move into these layer two protections and we're going to be looking at a temporary access pass in order to register or join the device into our network. So we're kind of modifying this first policy here. This is how you would step it up over time to require a temporary access pass because this is going to require that IT is involved to generate that and I'll show you that here in just a minute. And it will also help prevent against insecure sharing password practices that we'll see here as part of the user onboard for a new workstation or just you know the user onboard, new employee onboard in general. So if we head back in Entra, we go back to conditional access, we go to policies, and we go to new policy. This could be a 200 policy you institute, which is require a tab for device registration. Again, here we would be targeting all users. Under the targeted groups, we'd be targeting that user action again for register or join devices. And under the grant controls here, instead of require just multi-factor authentication, we're requiring an authentication strength. And in this case, I've set one for the temporary access pass, which I'll show you how to set up here in just a minute. But that would be the only difference here. The other settings are the same and you would go ahead and configure that policy. Some of the prerequisite steps though here, you would need to go under the authentication methods and make sure you turn on the temporary access pass in the settings here. And then from there, within this ecosystem, you would also go to the authentication strengths and you would add a new authentication strength like I did here for the um, tap. And you can click on that and I'll just kind of walk through this here. You could say it's tap and then you could use either the one-time use or the multi-use. I like to do one time just because that's kind of going into our onboarding flows that I'll show here in a minute. And then you're going to be able to apply that as part of that drop down in the conditional access policy that I set. Just be, take note here between the activation of the actual settings uh, within here or your policy, I should say, 
and the actual creation of the authentication strength, it can take some time to propagate. I'd recommend waiting a day, honestly, for my testing after it's created to go start testing it out um, because that's how long it took to kind of work the way that it was supposed to for me at least in my testing. So the big thing here when we talk about the second benefit of preventing insecure password sharing, when we think about our onboarding process for a user, which I'm focusing in on the device lens for this workflow, this is with a password today. We're kind of looking and getting a request from our customer. You know, we're saying, do we have that device in inventory? Do we have a device we could issue? And if we don't, you know, we're gonna probably procure one from a hardware company. I'm also assuming here that you're using Intune Autopilot uh, to deploy kind of a modern device experience. Not all of us are, so just keep that in mind, but focus in on this particular section because that's gonna be the same. And so if we are, we're gonna upload the device in Intune, but we're creating the user, which by default is gonna make us create a password for the user. And generally speaking, best practice is to say, you know, make the user change their password upon first sign-in, which reduces some of the other risks that I'll cover here. But when we send the user a password today, you know, we're either sending it to their personal email, which we have no idea if that's secure or not. You know, if they've gotten that hose or somebody's watching that today, could pick up their account and kind of sign in as that user day one. Could go to their HR manager, which is more secure because it's in within our network in the sense of the email we send out, but it also then gives the HR, the manager, the ability to share with the users and who knows how they're gonna do that. It could be quite insecure. If we're in office, we could use it, you know, put it on a post-it note. And I think that's just setting users up to put more passwords on post-it notes and really kind of treating that or teaching them a bad, bad practice as far as password management. And then uh, with this guy here, you know, this is sending a text message. It's also susceptible, you know, to SIM swapping, um, things like that too. So not always the most secure method um, in that particular sense. But again, if you set it to um, require change upon first sign in, a lot less reduced risk here. But what I love about the temporary access pass and the other piece here before we get into actually is when we ship the device and the user goes through the out of box experience, they're gonna be asked to type in their password to join that device upon the onboarding, right? So they need that to be able to sign in for their first day, obviously, but we want a more secure method and way to do that. So that gets us into this tap experience. And so we're still doing the same thing here as far as the initial request, but then we're actually going to be going ahead and generating a tap, which I'll show you how to do here in a second. But the benefits I like of the tap is that it's time bound, meaning it's just temporary. It's not permanent for them to use. It's a one time use, so they can't use it more than once. The big thing here though, is it also supports a passwordless deployment. So if a user was signing in for the first time in their out of box experience, they can just put in the tap and then register their second factor, you know, and it, it's managed by IT, meaning that support user would have to, you know, generate that. And again, if they, they missed their window or something like that, um, or they used it more than once or something got messed up, they would have to reach back out to IT. So you could say that's causing a little bit more friction, but I think it's just a much more secure method of requiring this. But the big component here is when we talk about device registration now for this, this is actually something that the user is going to be prompted to type in instead of their password. And so they won't be able to just register any device or join any device to our network. They're going to actually have to call IT and get a temporary access pass. So let me show you how to do that now within the Entre portal. Back in here, if we go to any user as an example, I'm going to go to somebody like Bruce Wayne. And within Bruce Wayne here, sections, you have the authentication methods here. And within here, we've got this uh, tap for this as well too. And you can view the details of this and, and this one's expired because I already used it in a different example. If you were to click on add authentication method, you would choose temporary access pass. You could delay the start time, you know, if this was a user on board is a great example of that. You would do it at their start date and start time of when they're gonna do that. And you could say that it's available for the next, you know, four hours, right? As a good good base for them to have enough time to be able to sign in. And it's one time use as part of that as well too. So whenever you click on add, it's gonna just generate this for you. 
and you would still have to transmit that right over to them but i like it better just because it is that one-time use it's within its time box window it's not just sitting there in the user's personal email box that we have no idea um, could be secure, could be hosed. We have we have no clue. So just a more secure channel, if you will, to be able to get that with a reduced attack surface. Okay, guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you had. If you hadn't had a chance to see my video last week on requiring managed devices, definitely check that out. And additionally, next week's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can prevent data exfiltration with guest users accessing your corporate data. So stay tuned for that and subscribe to the channel, sign up for those notifications if you haven't already. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week.